So today we are going to talk about another board, but it's not a microcontroller like the ESP32 or the Arduino. It's a single board computer, which is called the Raspberry Pi. So we have a Raspberry Pi 4 today, but you could pick up the Pi 5 if you want. We're going to follow the same steps. So it's going to be a beginner series. We're going to start by unboxing the board and installing an operating system. But later on, we are going to create some advanced projects. And let's dive right into it. As I said, we're going to start by unboxing the Pi 4. We're going to talk about the other components that you can use. It's actually a single board computer that comes with a RAM and a processor. Here we have four USB ports and we have this Ethernet port so that we can connect it to the router. Even though we can use the Wi-Fi capability of the board. On the right hand side, we have these pins. So these are called GPIO pins which stands for General Purpose Input-Output Pins. We can use to connect some external components like sensors. We can connect an LCD display. And on the other side, we have two micro HDMI ports. This is called HDMI 0, which we're going to connect it to a monitor. On the left side is a USB Type-C that we use to power up the board. So we're going to use an external power supply and the current needs to be at least 3 amps. We're going to unbox the power supply. But first, let's keep talking about this uh, board. Here we have these connectors that we can use uh, to connect a camera. For example, we can detect objects. And if we look at the back of the board, we have the micro SD card slot. We're going to install an operating system on this uh, micro SD card. Then we are going to insert it. But we can remotely control the board using our computer without the need of connecting it to a monitor. That's going to be the topic of our second video or third video. Today I'm going to use it as a normal desktop. We need the power supply. I have this one that comes with a switch to turn on and off the board. If you have the Pi 5, you have the option to turn it on and off using a push button. For me, I'm going to use the power supply to turn it on and off like this. As I said, the current needs to be at least 3 amps for the Pi 5 or 4. And it's a 5 volts power supply. Also, we're going to need a micro SD card. Because I didn't have a micro SD card reader on my computer. You need this uh, micro SD card to USB adapter. So I'm going to connect it like this. And plug this one to the computer. And add the operating system, which is called Pi OS. So first of all, we need to open up a browser and go to this website, Raspberry Pi slash software. You're going to find all of the links under the video description. Here we are going to add a software, which is called the Raspberry Pi Imager. It's going to allow us to burn the operating system to the micro SD card, and we can change some settings as well. For me, I have a Windows machine. I'm going to select it download for Windows, but you have the option to add it to a Mac OS or Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution. So it's 21.9 megabytes. First, you need to make sure to connect all of the peripherals. For me, I'm going to use this mini keyboard so that we can get the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. So it's pretty handy. Let's go ahead and use one of the ports. Also, I'm going to connect the monitor. I have this HDMI to micro HDMI cable. Make sure to use the HDMI 0, which is the first one on the left side. And we're going to connect the other side to a monitor. We haven't added the operating system yet, but it is recommended, or you have to uh, add all of the peripherals before powering the board. I'm going to use my current monitor because I didn't have a second monitor. You could also use the TV. Let's put it there for now. And get back to the USB imager. First, we have to install it by double clicking on it. I'm going to select English for the language. OK, next. You have to accept and hit next. We're going to install it under uh, program files. You could also add the desktop icon. And yeah, it's done. And it's going to run the Raspberry Pi imager automatically. You could also run it from your computer. 
here we have three options the first one on the left side is the module uh, the raspberry pi model which is called the raspberry pi 4 if you have the pi 5 make sure to select it next i'm going to choose the operating system because we have different versions i'm going to pick up the first one which is called pi os 64 bit we have other options like the pi os other this one is called pi os Lite, and it doesn't come with the desktop environment so as a beginner i recommend you to choose the first option pi os 64 bit then we're going to select the storage which is the micro sd card we have this one then we can hit next and here we can change some settings so i don't know why they have changed the language to french but here we have general we're going to set the host name we're going to use this name later on to access the pi remotely from uh, our computer make sure to check this uh, option next we are going to set a name and a password to secure the board i'm going to use my name shaker but make sure to uh, remember that we're going to use it later on as well and this is the most important uh, part because i don't want to use the ethernet port and connect the pi to the network i want to use uh, wi-fi so i will configure it from here by default it's gonna select the network that you are already connecting to which is called network you could also change the SID and the password of the network that you want last but not least we have the time zone and the keyboard type I'm gonna use uh, English so it's called US and here we have a little warning we need to set the Wi-Fi country for me it's Tunisia I don't know why this is important under services make sure to enable ssh because we want to access the raspberry pi later on from our computer remotely without the need of connecting it to a monitor and finally we have some options that are not important for example we want to eject the uh, usb drive once it is done i'm gonna hit save and then we can hit yes to apply the changes and yes again so this is going to delete all of the previous data under the SD card. Now we're going to wait a bit. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you get notified with my new videos. And let's get back again. And now it is verifying the installation. We're going to wait again. 2000 years later. We are going to continue using this button. And now we are going to unplug it. And take the micro SD card. So before powering the board, make sure to connect all of the peripherals. For me, I have connected this uh, mini keyboard and mouse at the same time. So it is wireless and it's gonna work just fine. And underneath the uh, board, we have the micro SD card slot. So make sure to insert it like this. And then we are going to connect the HDMI cable. As I said, I didn't have a second monitor, so I decided to use my projector. I have this Xiaomi video projector, and we have the screen right there. Let's go ahead and connect it the other side of the HDMI cable to our projector or monitor. You could also use the TV if you want. And let's go ahead and power up the Raspberry Pi using your, the USB Type-C cable. And I have this switch to turn it on. And yeah, it is working. And let's take a look at the projector. For me, I have to select the HDMI port from here using my remote. We have HDMI. And there you go, the Pi is working. Also, I can take the mini keyboard and use it. For example, we have the right mouse click. And yeah, it's working. Now I'm actually recording the screen so that you can see much better using uh, an app that is called Koha. Anyways, we're going to talk about the operating system and how to use it. So here we are inside the desktop. We can change some settings by right clicking using the mouse. We can create a new folder, new file, and we can go to the desktop preferences. Here we can change some settings. We can change the picture. By default, we have sunrise. 
let's use uh, mountain then we can hit open and we have this new uh, background under interfaces we've already enabled SSH I'm gonna go under mouse because I think it's a bit slow let's increase the speed now I think it's much better and we can play around with all of the different settings now let's talk about the other apps that comes with this operating system on the top left corner we have the Raspberry Pi logo if you go under it we have different options like programming this is the Thony IDE that we can use to write some Python code and we can open up a browser like Firefox so to add another app to the operating system we can go under preferences and we have this option add remove software we can click on it and we can search for whatever we want for example I'm going to search for the Arduino IDE and we can install it of course we have to select it first and hit OK here I'm going to pass in my password that we have set from the Raspberry Pi imager so before I finish this video I want to talk about the terminal we are going to use it a lot in our next videos so here we can write some commands to control the Pi system but we're going to talk about that later on for now I'm going to update the system to make sure that it's working just fine by writing the command sudo then apt update and we can hit OK or enter and instead of using sudo apt update I'm going to use upgrade then dash yes and hit OK and I think now we are ready to continue working with our Raspberry Pi projects because the system is up to date I recommend you to go to the Raspberry Pi logo and hit shut down and they will see you in the next one